Hello, and welcome to today's lesson on properties of the rhombus. We will be examining some special properties of the rhombus and applying the properties to solve math problems. Your lesson today will provide you with important foundational knowledge regarding relationships of angles, segments, and sides in a rhombus. This is essential to your understanding of geometric shapes and their properties, and will enrich your mastery of geometry as you move forward in this course. Let's look at our objectives for today. First, identify the properties of a rhombus. And second, apply those properties in order to solve problems. So as we get started, let's review some basic properties of a quadrilateral. A rhombus is in fact a quadrilateral. And as you recall, a quadrilateral has four sides, four vertices, and four angles that sum to 360 degrees. Here are some examples of quadrilaterals that you are familiar with, including the rhombus. And you can see four sides, four vertices, and all four angles when you sum them will sum to 360. Another thing that we will discuss is that a rhombus is similar to a parallelogram. In fact, it is a parallelogram. So let's look at those properties. A parallelogram has two sets of opposite parallel sides. Opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles sum to 180 degrees. As you know, with a parallelogram, opposite is top and bottom or left and right in either this parallelogram, the rhombus, the rectangle, or the square. The trapezoid is not a parallelogram. So opposite angles are always parallel. In addition, opposite angles are always congruent. We've looked at that. So opposite versus consecutive. Consecutive is right next to each other. If somebody's sitting next to you in class, they're sitting consecutively next to you or in consecutive order versus opposite. So opposite angles are congruent, meaning they have the same measure, and consecutive angles sum to 180 degrees. So if I took the measurement of this angle down here on this parallelogram, right here on the left, and I added it to the angle that is next to it, that is consecutive to it, I would get 180 degrees. So that's a review of some key quadrilaterals, a quadrilateral itself, and a parallelogram. A rhombus is both a quadrilateral and a parallelogram. But now let's examine some special properties of a rhombus by using geometric sketchpad. So one of the special properties is that a rhombus has four congruent sides, meaning that all the sides are equal, just like a square. Let's check, let's make sure. So let's measure those. Side CD right here, the measure of side CD, comes to seven centimeters. Therefore, I should find that side CA right here is also seven centimeters, and it is, in fact. I'll go ahead and measure all the sides just to prove that, in fact, this is a rhombus and all the sides are congruent. And you can clearly see all four sides are the same. So what happens if I take this rhombus and I change the shape? I change, I make it bigger, I make it smaller. Will the sides stay congruent? Let's look. So here I am moving it all around. And if you notice on the left, the measurements stay consistent. They are still congruent. They change, but they are all still congruent. That is one of the key special properties of a rhombus. All right, let's examine another property. Diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. Well, what does that mean? Perpendicular, if two lines are perpendicular, they form 90 degree angles. They form right angles. If something is a bisector of something, that means that it splits it into two congruent segments. Therefore, DE, for example, would be congruent to segment EA, and segment CE would be congruent to segment EB. So let's do a few measurements just to confirm. So let's measure angle D, E, B. As we said, we should get 90 degrees. Let's verify. And look, we did. Using vertical angles, you then know that angle C, E, A will also be 90 degrees. But let's go ahead and measure angle A, E, B. And in fact, we do get 90 degrees. So if we were to look at angle C, E, D, that's a vertical angle to A, E, B. So that in fact would be 90 degrees as well. Let's verify that the segments then are in fact 
congruent. Let's look at DE, segment DE. So that distance is 3.39 centimeters. Well, if this diagonal is bisecting this diagonal, then I know that I have EA, which should in fact be congruent to DE, and they are. I could measure BE and EC, but let's move on. Here's the results of our measurements. Here's the results of our congruent sides. So we have, in fact, two very important special properties that we have looked at so far. All four sides are congruent, and the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. And we measured to make sure. Our final property is that the diagonals bisect the angles. So diagonal CB, for example, bisects angle DCA, meaning that it bisects it into two congruent angles. So angle C, or D I should say, DCE, should in fact be congruent to angle E, let's check, angle ECA. So I've gone ahead and measured angle DCE, and I'm going to go ahead and measure now angle ECA, and Let's make sure we've got everything marked. Try that again. Angle E, C, A. And let's measure that angle. And in fact, they are congruent. So diagonals do in fact bisect the vertice angles. All right, so let's look at all of our results. We have four congruent sides in a rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular bisectors, and the diagonals bisect the angles. Now let's take those properties and use those to solve problems. So let's go back to our lesson. And here we have a summary of our special properties, if you'd like to write those down. Four congruent sides, diagonals are perpendicular bisectors, and diagonals are angle bisectors. We're going to be using those properties and maybe some of the other properties in order to solve some problems. So let's look first at example one. We have rhombus RHOM, and we're given some information. We're given information about the line segments, the sides. HP, well actually that's a segment of the diagonal, is 4x, and PM, another segment of a diagonal, is 5x minus 3. In order to solve these problems, it's easier to label your diagram with the information given. So I would therefore then take 4x and I would stick it on the segment that it applies to, and I would take 5x minus 3 and do the same. When you're solving geometric problems, the first step is to set up a relationship. Set up some sort of equation that illustrates a relationship that you know. Well, we've learned that diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. So go ahead and pause the video and try to solve this problem. Try to set up a relationship and solve the problem. All right, hopefully you have the same solution as I do. So remember, as we said, diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. That means that segment HP right here is going to be congruent to segment PM. Therefore, the relationship you should have set up is that 5x minus 3 equals 4x those two segments are congruent. Solving for x, you get 3. We're not quite finished because we need to solve to find the entire diagonal hm. So through the use of substitution, we can plug the 3 in for x, add those two segments together, and get a combined total of 24. So now we are finished with the problem, and we have solved using one of our relationships. Let's move on to example 2. All right, in example two, now we're going to be looking at some angles. So in the same rhombus, if the measure of angle RHP is this, 6y plus 7, and the measure of angle PHO is 9y minus 5, let's solve to find y and the measure of RMO. So again, if it helps you to label the diagram, because it helps me, go ahead and do that. Pause the video and go ahead and solve and find your solution. All right. Let's see if your solution matches mine. So a key property to remember is that diagonals bisect angles. Therefore, the measure of PHO 
this angle, and the measure of RHP, this angle right here, are congruent. Setting up a relationship showing that they're congruent is what you would need to do to solve the problem. Solving for y, you get 4. Then, in order to find the measure of RMO, that's this whole angle down here. That's this whole vertice, the vertice with M. Okay? We have to remember something from our past. We have to remember the properties of a parallelogram. And the properties of a parale pa parallelogram say that opposite angles are congruent. So, if we can find the measure of RHO, then we know the measure of RMO. To solve to find RHO, just like in the previous problem, we will use substitution. We know that y is 4, so if we plug y, if we plug 4 in for y, in both of these terms, we get a measure of 62 degrees for the measure of RHO. Without using any math, just our knowledge of properties, we can then infer that the measure of RMO is also 62 degrees. All right, let's move on to our final problem today, example number 3. Example number three has four parts. So again, in a problem like this, given all this information, we have segment measures, we have angle measures, go ahead and label your diagram. So I'm going to label my diagram while you work on solving this problem. Okay, my diagram is labeled, hopefully yours is as well. So in order to solve this problem, remember, diagonals are perpendicular and all sides are congruent. Knowing that these diagonals are perpendicular, we have a 90 degree angle in here. Therefore, if I'd use my magic pen and highlight it for you, this triangle right here, O, P, H, is in fact a right triangle. And what do you use to solve sides in a right triangle? You use the Pythagorean theorem. So, knowing that all sides are equal, if side MO is 13, then I know right here that side HO is also 13. And in fact, I have one, two of the three sides of a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side, and I end up with 12. All right, so now I have found segment PO. Moving down, if I want to find segment RP right here, think about how we might do that. RP is going to be congruent to PO because our diagonals bisect each other, so in fact RP will also be 12. That's not too bad. Finally, let's go down to the measure of OPM and the measure of RMH. Well, OPM, we don't have to do any math calculations because that's 90 degrees. The diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. They're perpendicular. They form 90 degrees. Our last problem, RMH, the angle RMH, if we look at the triangle, we can then use the triangle sum to find the angle. So look at triangle RPM. So now we are looking down here at this triangle, R, P, M, which in fact, ooh, crazy triangle, which in fact we actually have two of the three measures already. So if we know that a triangle has 180 degrees, we can then subtract 67 degrees because these angles will be congruent, opposite angles are congruent. We can subtract the 90 degrees because these lines are perpendicular to each other and then we can come up with the measure of RMH which you should have gotten 23 degrees. And those are our three examples for today. Let's sum up what we learned. So our objectives were to identify the properties of a rhombus, which we did, and we were also s supposed to apply those properties in order to solve problems. You had three problems to solve, and in fact, we solved them. So let's recap. A rhombus is a parallelogram, but it also has some special properties. There are four congruent sides, the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors, and the diagonals are angle bisectors. And that concludes our lesson for today. I'll see you next class and we'll be looking at the relationships um, and the properties of a trapezoid.